As you know, OpenAI just recently launched its new file search tool. Now imagine using the OpenAI system natively to access your entire database of files, documents, and information at lightning speed in both structured and unstructured format. So what we want to set up is uh, something like a database where a user comes in and it appends that user profile into that file. Let's just call this file a user profile file. And it would also not only add information, it would retrieve information, perhaps update the information, something like that. But because we cannot modify the file that's stored in the vector database, we have to come up with another solution. That's the power of the new file search feature from OpenAI. Now in this video, we'll explore how you can use this game-changing technology to supercharge your productivity, manage your costs, and take your business to new heights, all using the OpenAI Assistant out of the box. Let's go. Also, my friend, it would mean a lot to me if you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I post content about Python and OpenAI Assistants daily. This would help me get the message across. So uh, please do that, and let's go dive into the video. As you know, as of April 2024, OpenAI launched an improved tool called File Search, which can ingest up to 10,000 files. It was using 20 files before, and it moved to 500x more. And it supports parallel queries with multi-threaded searches and feature-enhanced ranking, query rewriting. As a developer, you know the pain of constantly reminding your assistant to look at specific information within the files and it may fail to do so before. But now, with the automatic uh, query rewriting, it manages the prompt for you so that it can go ahead and look for the relevant information. It's a big game changer. And along with the file search tool, they've introduced something called a vector store object in the API. So once the file is added to the vector store, it's automatically parsed, chunked, and embedded and made ready to be searched. I made another video how this process works and how it can leverage something called semantic search to find meaning from uh, the documents and the database that you're going to provide to the assistant. They also have a new feature where you can now attach files to specific threads, okay, instead of attaching it to assistants. Okay, what that means is that using the message attachments, you'll get a default expiration policy of seven days after they were last active. So it's dynamically managing the cost for you. So imagine having a database, uh, like a large database in your local server or your computer, but you want to use it only specifically for the threads or conversation. You can use that while it persists in your local uh, drive, you're only using it for that conversation. And after seven days, it's gone. So you're saving that cost aspect. Okay, so this is a game changer and it allows you to do so much more with So you might be wondering what is a vector database? It's essentially a database that handles the complexities of large language models and allowing it to scale using both structured and unstructured data. It stores information as vectors which are numerical representations of data objects also known as vector embeddings. Okay, so if you have a file, JSON file, a PDF, even images, right? When you send this data over to OpenAI, we'll parse, chunk, and embed the data and convert it to numerical format, okay? I made another video to explain how this process works, but imagine the data being converted to numerical representation. So you go from text to something like one, two, three, four, five. It's in a vector dimension space, okay? Well, that means the data is now stored efficiently in the database, so if the LLM models wants to retrieve anything from that database that can do it at lightning speed. Not only that, having vector embeddings or numerical representation allows semantic search possible, which is essentially finding meaning from the data. Before, it was only using keyword searches. For example, you're looking for shampoo, it will find out shampoo in specific chunks of text in the data. But now, if you say something like, I'm looking for something for my hair, and it's going to determine what's closest to hair, and it's going to find shampoo and then return that results to you, okay? Okay, so that is possible through something called semantic search, which allows meaning and the LM can retrieve the specific results for you. So I've been exploring this idea, what if we have a local database of user profiles, right? Could the assistant also retrieve specific items, maybe append rows into that uh, user profile database or even delete records, right? And uh, even though there's so many uh, benefits of using vector search, for example, rewriting uh, queries, breaking down complex user queries and running things in parallel, both keyword and semantic search, etc., cetera, um, there are still some known limitations that you need to be aware of, okay? So I encourage you to look through this list to understand the limitations. One limitation I found personally was that you can only attach one vector store to either an assistant or a thread. 
but you can still have 10,000 files, okay? So basically what that means is like, let's say you have an assistant, you can have tools. Tools could be, and in this case, it is a file search, right? We're gonna use file search that allows us to now use vector database, okay? So there's only one vector database for one assistant, but in that vector database, think of multiple files you can attach. As you know, once you create a vector store, you now have to upload files to the vector store. You can create a vector store file. You, you can list the vector store files. You can retrieve it. You can delete it. But you cannot modify the files that are stored in the vector database. Okay, that's one of the limitations. Nor can you download the files. So what we want to set up is uh, something like a database where a user comes in and it appends that user profile into that file. Let's just call this file a user profile file. And it would also not only add information, it would retrieve information, perhaps update the information, something like that. But because we cannot modify the file that's stored in the vector database, we have to come up with another solution. And this is the solution I have, and I'm gonna walk you through the concept. So perhaps you can also use it and comment below if you found something else that's working for you that allows you to locally and natively manage user profiles for the assistant. Let me walk you through the code. First, I'm installing the OpenAI package, then I'm authenticating the client, uh, then I am creating a vector store. Now, it could have other files that's not pertaining to user database, but I'm just calling this user database for now. And I'm also creating an assistant, your helpful assistant that manages user profiles, tools, or file search, and then I'm attaching the vector store ID to be used for that assistant, okay? I've used four functions to help us achieve this task. So I'm gonna briefly explain what each of these are doing. For example, if there's no file in our local directory, I'm going to create a new file called userprofile.json. It will look something like this. There's gonna be a JSON file and it's gonna have key value pairs of the person's name and additional information uh, such as preferences, okay? So if they like music, biking, or anything, any, of, any other activities. And it would have multiple records. So if somebody comes in and uh, provides their name and their preference, it would be stored in that local directory. So I use this function to update the local directory with a new profile or new user that comes in. And this function is going to retrieve the latest file from the vector store. And this function is going to delete the latest file from the vector store and upload a new file with the new changes in, our, in the file that we have in our local directory. Okay, so in this way, the files are always up to date and we can retrieve and augment our data with new information. If you want a full end-to-end -end solution, I can make that video as well. Comment below if you'd like to see this. This is just a concept, uh, so feel free to share your thoughts and let me know how you... Okay, let's run this from the top. So we're going to create a local profile file. It's going to be an empty dictionary. As you can see, it's completely empty. Okay, we're going to comment this out so it doesn't run again. And now we're going to add a record to this. So as you can see, we now added a new record with the name of the person as well as some of the hobbies. Now let's say I want to add another record. Let's say Mike, let's say Mike loves Python and AI. As you can see, we now have a new record in that file. And check this out, every time I update the database with a new record or delete a record or uh, modify anything, it's going to then go ahead and retrieve the latest file from the vector store delete it and upload the new file from this local directory that I have. Okay, so in this way, the file is always fresh and we can always use that for our query purposes. So let's go ahead and run this and show you exactly how it's working now. Sam loves biking and hiking. Went ahead and deleted the current file and then it uploaded a new file to that vector database. To start talking to the assistant, you need to create something called a thread. The thread will initialize that conversation and will record all the conversation between the user and the assistant, right? So we're going to append this message to the thread as the initial message. How many people are in the database? Let's run this. And in the last block, I have a streaming function set up. This is provided by OpenAI that allows you to stream the responses back from the assistant. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. It's doing the file search. The database contains three people, Garrett, Mike, and Sam. This is accurate, okay? So this is exactly the number of people we've added into the database. I want you to conceptually also imagine this function to be a function that can be called by the assistant. So meaning not only we have file search, but we can also have the functions that allows the assistant to add, delete, or modify existing records in the database automatically. So we don't have to connect any external databases. The assistant natively and locally does this for you.
let's try another example. Let's say loves walking and surfing. Let's go ahead and add this. It's deleting the file and it's uploading a new file. You also can see in our local file, we have that information of Dana. And then we are going to run the thread again. Well, let's ask a different question. Tell me about Dana. And then we get the assistance response. Dana's profile indicates that our preference include walking and surfing. That's pretty good. The assistant is able to understand it's a record and then also get meaning from the data. And also, so this file is in your local directory. You can manage it however you want and you can create custom functions that allow you to work with that file in any shape or form. Now to manage the cost on the OpenAI server, as you know, it's 0 0.10 per gigabyte per day to store files uh, in the OpenAI server. Now at any point, this file gets huge. You, you don't have to append it to the assistant. You can just append it to the specific thread. So it gets discarded after seven days of use that allows you to manage costs and uh, you know manage the files much more effectively. As a developer, this is huge because OpenAI listened to all the complaints that we had on V1 and all the limitations, and it took that and created new added functionality to the V2, which solves a lot of these issues. Uh, we had to connect to external vector stores, external databases, manage our prompts when we are sending uh, queries. Now, this makes everything so much easier. All we need to do now is just use this tech stack and then build applications on top of it. So technology is not the limitation anymore. The only limitation is your imagination. So I want you to think about um, how fast everything is growing at this stage. Even though OpenAI is not open source, it still has a secret source that the other players are trying to unravel and GPT-4 still is at the top at the LLM leaderboard. And if you're looking to start your AI journey, I definitely recommend you start playing around with the OpenAI and start learning. Uh, the languages of uh, AI, which what that also means that GPT-5 tsunami is coming. You have an option to ride it or get crushed by it because GPT-5 and beyond represent a tidal wave of change. They're, they'll introduce something called agent technology, which will allow you to use natural language to program your assistants to do tasks for you, like browse the web, schedule posts, and they can also learn autonomously. I made a video earlier about Debian, the AI autonomous software engineer that can create complex applications for you that can do research and debug code published to GitHub repositories. And GPT technology is growing rapidly. They're training and improving every day. Okay, the AI revolution is here and those who embrace it will be the 1% leading the charge. Don't take the easy route because that's going to hurt you in the long term. Devin will not understand your complex Zapier workflows. Devin can understand code and it speaks its unique language. So it's really important that you start leveling up yourself and understanding the languages of these autonomous agents, which are prompt engineering as well as Python. Don't get left behind. By understanding their language, you're not only going to future-proof yourself from the tsunami, but you're also going to create amazing software as applications, manage and understand these bots. So you can make the bots do the work for you. In this day and age, we need to be co-partners with our autonomous friends and we need to understand their language. So stop fiddling around with Zapier and complex workflows. Start learning Python today so you can upskill yourself and be ready for this change. I have a community waiting for you. Python for assistants and agents is absolutely free to join. You get access to community and resources so you can understand how assistant agent technology work and how you can upskill yourself with Python and prompt engineering. We keep you accountable and we keep you in track to survive the tsunami. You don't have to join the community, but it will help you accelerate your learning curve. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Also, if you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get updated every time I drop a new video and also share with your friends.